Model Train Outsider, Episode 9. I'm Anthony Dodge, and so is he. And so I'm... Wait a minute. You actually introduced me today? Wow. Yeah, I thought I'd be nice today. Sometimes you gotta treat yourself right. So none of your dictator, I'm in charge, I'm in control here stuff. And funny you should mention that, because today I want to talk about controlling your layout or train table or loop a train, whatever you're running. Originally, there was one way to control your trains. It was called analog, and I've talked about that in a couple of previous videos. You turned a dial, and you ran your trains. Today, while analog is still out there, like everything else in the world, digitalization has come into play, and you can now control your trains digitally. So let's break this into parts and talk briefly about the old way of controlling trains, which he would know a little bit more about. Over to you. Oh, okay then. Well, let's go back to me, 50, well, almost 50 years ago, let's say about 40 seven years ago. I'm seven or eight and I get a train for Christmas, as I've mentioned in previous videos. And you turn the knob and the train moved. Actually, this is the controller I had. It was a company called Tyco. They made the train set and it actually didn't have the knob as I talk about. It had the little slider bar that you can see there. It has a little slider bar and it took the train from stop to full speed, and then there was a little switch that you can see that caused the train to change directions. This is called analog. It was also called direct control, DC, but it was analog. It was power in equals power out on the train. Turn up the dial or push the lever a little further. The train went faster around the track. You controlled how much energy flowed directly through it. So it was DC current. It was direct control. And we call this analog. Nothing fancy. Just basic train control. Truth be told, a lot of train, uh, model train people 50%, give or take a few points, still operate their train systems through some sort of analog control. Even Maryland, for all my fancy trains, still has a analog control system. A lot of people prefer analog. They don't want all the fancy stuff. They don't want all the gimmicks. They just want their trains to run around their track. And if that's all they want, maybe a couple of functions like lights or steam, those are run automatically through the train. For example, uh, you turn the power down, the lights dim because it's not getting enough electricity. So that was the most common form. In fact, it was the only form of control until the late 80s, early 90s, when companies like Maryland, I don't know if they were the first, I think they were one of the first, when Maryland, the company whose trains and tracks and everything I use, uh, started creating digital. As computer systems come out, we computerized everything. And so I will send it over to future me, or as you would know, current me, and let them talk to you about digital. Back to you. Okay, so, that was analog, the way it was originally done and the way it's still done by many, many train modelers. I don't have percentages. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, 50-50 um, maybe, uh, maybe 60-40 in favor of digital. Because as has been brought out in previous videos, I'm a bells and whistle guy. And what that means is I like the tech. I like the new stuff. I like the fancy. I don't have necessarily a lot of money a lot of the time, but if I have the money or there's something I really want, I will wait 
and get what I can. Digital tech is so inexpensive these days, you don't necessarily have to pay a lot of money. But like everything else, the train hobby is the exception. If you want digital, you're gonna pay a little bit more for it. Now, digital and train simply means this. The train or the locomotive, whatever is the actual power, houses the motor, uh, will have a computer chip, a decoder as it's called. And that decoder has programmed into it the various functions that that particular train or locomotive can do when it's on your system. Whether it's turning on the lights, uh, depending on direction, the directional lights, the high beams if it so functions, uh, the uh, do you want whistles and horns, the sound of the trains moving, coupling sounds, uncoupling sounds, the pantographs going up and down, anything you can imagine, the brakes squealing on, the air compressors turning on, the fans turning on, diesel locomotive sounds, it's all available. You're going to pay for it, but it's all there. Many trained people, they don't need all that. They're usually just happy with the directional lights and that's it, and then analogs what they want. But if you want all those functions like I do, you're going to buy digital. Now, just like computers, Windows versus the Mac operating systems versus Linux and everybody else, everybody has a digital language that they program their chips with. And that's the biggest problem. There are two main fields. There's a lot of others, but there are two main languages out there. One's called DCC, Digital Command Control. And any train system that's DC will have DCC uh, decoders. They kind of go hand in hand. That goes with the two rail system I talked about previously. Miracle has its own language. Originally, it was called MM, Miracle Motorola, because it was designed in conjunction with the Motorola company. Now, there are others. There's Skelectrix and dozens more, but DCC and MM are the two biggest. Now, having said that, within the last two, three, four years, Miracle the 800-pound gorilla in the room, um, changed their programming system a bit. And so they have a new one called MFX, which is, allows more functions and all kinds of interactions with their digital control systems. So you'll see an MM or MFX decoder with Miracle. And everybody else uses DCC. Again, some companies, to run compatibility with uh, the Miracle systems will make MM chips that the Miracle systems can read. But that's what happens. Chips with decoders, you put them on your track, and if you have a digital controller, it reads the chips, it reads the functions. And yes, you can run DCC trains with MM trains on either system. The main digital controllers out there are Miracle with its central station, which is on generation three now. There's ECOS, made by the company ESU, and in fact, ESU made the original central station, and then they broke their contract with Miracle. They created the ECOS command station, and Miracle went on its own and created the central station two, and now the central station three, which came out last year. And then uh, the company Roco slash Fleischmann, and there was also a bunch of other companies involved. They have theirs called the Z21. Now, basically, each of these command centers uh, is just a computer that you connect to your layout, and you can operate all the functions on your track, lights, signals, housing lights, anything on your layout, plus the trains and all their functions. Operate turnouts, everything else, if you add digital motors and everything to them have to do that as well. You can digitize all your turnouts or points as some people call them. Um, and then the, the command center reads it and you can operate it. When you're running digital, it just makes 
commanding so many things, multiple trains, and so many functions on your layout, so much easier to run. Plus, you can now use computer programs and tie them in. The problem is they're expensive. The Z21 is the one of the three big three I've mentioned. It doesn't come with its own display screen. It just connects straight to your computer and you use your computer. So you save a little money there. The ECOS and the Maryland uh, Central Stations, they come with display screens built into their console. Now, I can't tell you the pros and cons. I had an ECOS. I felt like it was struggling a little bit with some of my Miracle and trains and more importantly with other companies' trains designed to work with Miracle. And now, I bought it used, and that may have been the problem. It may have just had the glitch already in there. But I changed over and bought a Miracle and Central Station 3, and I love it. They're expensive. I paid $540 for my Central Station 3. But what I'd like to do is just show you the different levels uh, because there are some good sides and bad sides to controlling your uh, train system uh, with digital controllers, especially through Miracle. Uh, Miracle has three levels. There's the Delta, which is basically an analog system, except now it operates digitally. It's the old dial and turn, as uh, older me discussed. You just turn the dial and operate. Uh, then they have what's called the mobile station, which I will talk about in a minute, and then the central station, which I will demonstrate to you after I demonstrate the mobile station. So here is how I run my train system. So this is the basic Merklin digital controller. It's called the mobile station. Technically, this is mobile station 2. There was an earlier generation of it. This is sort of an upgrade. Mobile station is probably not the most accurate name because as you can see it's got a cord which runs to its little power box you can see here. And so, well, yeah, you're mobile, you're not 100% mobile. You got a limited range of mobility. Let me set this on the desk and run through the basics. So the Mobile Station 2, a basic handheld controller, it still has its analog roots. You have a button here which controls the speed, which you'll see indicated here, up and down. And then if you push this button in, it'll change the direction the train is going. The digital functions are controlled here. The first eight functions, F0 through F7, are here. And then if you want to get to the additional functions, you just press shift and now additional functions show up on the sides. Now, the symbols for the functions are basic. You have a light function and what looks like a speaker for speaker function. Your uh, shunting or slowdown mode is uh, the little turtle symbol here. So it's basic. You kind of have to remember which of these symbols covers which function. Um, if you want to change control trains, there's a little train button here. And you can change which train you're controlling by either clicking through, which is a lateral movement. Or if you hit shift, you can dial back and forth. If you want to control functions on your track, digitally control functions, and you have that, you'll just click this track button, which shows a turnout. You click that, and then wherever your turnouts are, and again, you can control them simply by flipping the buttons. So usually it's the middle two buttons for operation. Um, the stop button is the default setting, so nothing will run or work. Click the stop button off. Everything's ready to go. It tells you what train you're going, and now you can control the functions of the turnouts, open or close them. All right. So we'll go back to train. If you want to adjust the settings, you just hit shift. And then now you can go through and adjust the settings. For example, let's dial through the train. I only have one train that's currently on the tracks operated by this controller, my IC2. And if I want to adjust anything about this train I just hit shift in the train function and then I have a dial a um, scroll down menu 
Do I want to add a loco in this place? Do I want to change this loco somehow? For example, if I click change loco, I get a new, do I want to change its name? Do I want to change its address? Um, dial down over here. Do I want to change the symbol? They have a database built in. But again, it's very basic and you can see, do I want to change its maximum velocity? Do I want to change its minimum velocity? Its acceleration, deceleration time velocity, all these things. You can change volume. Do I want to make it quieter or louder? So anyhow, let's go back to train. And then it's just ba it's still basic control, but it's digital, so there's more functions and more things you can do with it. As you can see, it's in stop mode. So if I take it off stop mode, and I'll let you see, if you can look on the front of the train, you can see the lights are off. So if I hit the light button, right here I think you can now see the lights are now on I can have various sound functions so I'll hit one of the sound functions see it does it they just sound so you have to kind of memorize what it is so that's sort of the engine startup noise I don't know if you can hear that And that's pretty much what you do. There's a lot more you can do with it, but this is sort of the basics. So I will hit stop mode, which shuts everything off. So now I want the train to move. So it's in stop mode. I'll click stop mode off. So now the sounds will start again. And I use the red dial. And I will start to dial it. And the train, which has a delay built in, will slowly begin to move and there it goes and I can speed it up and slow it down by clicking so it's very similar to the old analog dialing system so that is the Maryland mobile station it's a very simple digital controller allows access to almost all the digital functions. It does have a limit to 16 functions and some of the newer uh, locomotive and models have 21, 22, 23, 24, e even getting as high as 31 functions. The mobile station here can't access them all. But this is a basic one. Now, for Maryland, it's basic. And you usually get this in most startup sets. By itself, for this controller and the power pack, because they sell them separately, you're going to spend somewhere between 110 and 150 euros, which is about 130 to 175 American dollars. So it is not an inexpensive controller. There is a cheaper controller, which is the basic, you can get an analog or digital version of what's called Merklin uh, Delta which I showed pictures earlier. But this is the base controller for Maryland. There's nothing else that will run directly on Maryland C track. That is this inexpensive. You cannot buy some generic company controller that works on Maryland track. You have to get one of the Maryland uh, digital controllers, this uh, mobile station two. Now, if you really want to upgrade and spend the money, you get the big controllers. And Maryland's version is called the Maryland Central Station. Now, the most advanced control system, especially for Maryland, is the Maryland CS3, Central Station 3. This is the third generation of their digital command system. This has everything that you could want in digital command. It is designed to link up with computers, uh, programming systems, whatever you want to give you the highest level of command with a digital train system. It still has your basic 
control system. You have a dial here which controls the speed. You can see the red line going up. It's, the line is red because I have it in stop mode. That's the default setting. It's always in stop mode. If you want trains to go, you just press that. And now, if I click it, you'll hear a train running. You press the button, and you'll see the direction finder change. If you zoom in, you'll see that now the symbology of the different functions are all listed here. It's touch screen, but you can also connect a mouse to it, which you know saves wear and tear on the screen and the touch system. So you can use a mouse and turn on the systems. I'll turn on the uh, running sound here so you can hear it. Conductor whistle. Station announcements. So, compared to the mobile station, this is much more advanced. You can control everything here. If you want to change a train, you just click on the train from your train list in the middle, you move it over, and now you're controlling that train and its functions show up. I'll go back to the train that was here. You have a train list here. If you want to edit your trains, you've got the edit button here. You click on it. You click edit locos, but you can see there's all sorts of things, add locos and so forth. But when you go to edit loco, you pick on a train you want to edit. And now it gives you the different pages. Info, setup, and configuration when you want to change CV values and everything. I don't want to get into that, so at this stage, I'm not going to do it. The train I picked is actually not on this system right now. That's why it's trying to find it. So when you're happy with it, you just click select if you don't want to change anything just x out of it you go back to the screen you go back to the screen click off the x and now you go back to cl uh, controlling trains all these are drop down and slide in menus i can get rid of this i can open these windows up further depending on how many pages of functions there are and then here i can pull down and control all my turnouts you also can see in the middle of the screen uh, there is a track function. Once you design and build your track in, like any of the systems, the Z21, the ECOS, you design your layout on the screen and can control everything from here. Not only can I control everything from here, but with Wi-Fi, just like all the other systems, ECOS and Z21 and everybody else, I can link it to my computer. And now everything that's on my Central Station 3 is on my computer here, except on earlier versions, you only got a mirror. In other words, what was on your CS3 screen was on this. But now this is a different functioning screen. I can control different trains here. So I could have three, four, five, six trains all the way up to 10 across my screen here if I wanted to. For example, let me demonstrate that for you. If I pull this all the way up to the top, all of a sudden all my trains are across the screen and whichever ones I'm operating or running, you can see they show up here. Their speeds and their directions are all set up here. But let's minimize that again. But that gets changed over here. I can now control different trains here. So I can control the functions, the speeds, the directions without having to constantly go change on different screens. I can have two trains I'm controlling here. I can have two more here. And then with an app on my tablet, as you can see, I can control all my layout functions and my trains here. And I can control as many as four on the screen. You just click the little I button here, if it'll work. 
and you hit the control two, and voila. Now I have two more trains up and ready to control. I just merely click on the train symbol and pick which ones I also want to control. So I'll pick my IC there. On this one, I will put my railjet. And then down here, I will put my, now you can see it's already selected. And now all my trains are here. And now with the tablet, I'm truly mobile. I can take this tablet off its stand, disconnect the charging wire, and I can go anywhere in this room. I can go upstairs and I can control all my trains mobile. And that's the nice thing. I don't have to pay two or three hundred dollars like I would for the uh, ECOS mobile controllers. You have to buy the ECOS. Uh, command station and then you can buy the two mobile controllers now you can buy mobile controllers for from other companies that are a little bit cheaper but for better or for worse Maryland stuff works better with Maryland since I have Maryland track and mostly Maryland trains I went with the Maryland system and the Maryland system instead of you doling out a lot more money for handheld controllers with the app you and Wi-Fi you now have complete mobility with your tablet to control your trains. So I can have it on my computer, I can have it on my uh, tablet, and then I can connect up to two of my mobile stations. This is a mobile station two, just black, and I can run those into my central station as well. So I could be independently controlling, well, let's see, I would have two here, or one on this controller, four on here, I can have up to 10 here on this screen, and I could have literally up to 10 on there. I could be controlling 20 some trains at once, and if I had a tablet or my smartphone, I can add more. I don't have that many trains running, but that's the nice thing about digital. Whether you do uh, DCC or you do um, Maryland Motorola or Maryland MFX programming system, all these pricey control systems will recognize them. I just find Maryland obviously is more intuitive with Maryland trains than the ECOS was. The ECOS is excellent. I just find Maryland works better with Maryland. So that is a look at the command system of my layout. But it's come a long way since that little dial and knob on my toy Tyco Lionel train system from a long time ago. This is what I like. I spent the money and I got it because this just works for me. You don't have to spend this kind of money, but is it worth it? If you want to run a long layout and control lots of trains, whether you're doing DCC or Maryland Motorola, Maryland MFX systems, it's worth picking up in the long run, especially if you want to run four, five, six trains at the same time, or even control that many trains in and out of your system and your parking area. So definitely something to look into if you want to really take full advantage of digital trains. All right, so that's it for episode nine. I've been Anthony Dodge, and I will see you for episode 10. Bye.